All right, now for those who believe in the rapture, there are different views of when it will happen, when the saints believe it will happen, and we're going to look at that. We're going to, we're going to look at that in this particular video, or look at those particular views, and and uh, we're just going to briefly go over them. And of course, as we get deeper into this, we're going to go deeper and deeper to each one using scripture, using online resources, even historical resources, and so on and so forth. But for starters, let's go to First Thessalonians chapter chapter one, and we're going to start with verse thirteen. This is Paul writing to and uh, writing to the uh, the church in Thessalonica. So this is First Thessalonians chapter four, starting with verse thirteen. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and let me put a thumbtack there real quick. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, that, that just, I, I should have really started off with this, but if you, if you don't have that down pat, if you don't start there, then all of this pre-trib, mid-trib, pre-wrath, partial or post will mean nothing. If you're not saved, it's all you're going to do is just go through a study of understanding or having a belief of when it's going to happen, but it's not going to happen to you if you are not saved. So with that said, um, I want to start all of this off with Romans 10, chapter 9, and it says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I jump down to verse 13 for a reason. So with that, if you don't have that settled, the rapture is just nothing but a theological or a, a theological um, type of study, or a study in eschatology. That's all it is. That's all it is. Now, now let's go back. Let's, um, let's see, Paul, again, he says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord shall him sh for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we uh, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. So the key right here, and this is the point of basically the point, I won't say of argument, but of debate. In some cases, yes, argument um, is when will we be caught up as believers? There are there are we're gonna find that there are several different scriptures that people use. What I'm finding is mainly First Thessalonians chapter four, Matthew chapter twenty four with the Lord speaking here and uh dealing with great tribulation and um and then also if you parallel it with uh I believe it's Mark thirteen and, and uh it could be Luke um uh, Luke twenty one and so on and so we're gonna go through a lot of those as we go along and also first Corinthians chapter 15 about being changed in the twinkling of an eye now but let's go to a website that I found to be very interesting uh, wikipedia.org and dealing with the rapture and here's and there's a chart that we're going to take a look at as you can see here pre-tribulation mid-tribulation pre-wrath partial and post-tribulation those tend to be the major views and there are those who don't believe in a rapture at all so when we say pre-tribulation I'm going to shorten it up you're going to hear me say pre-trib, mid-trib, pre-wrath as you can already see that's already shortened and post-trib 
And typically what I've noticed is that the pre-trib and the post-trib butt heads more than anyone else. All right, so I want to pull up this particular chart over here, which is going to serve a pretty good purpose in what we're, what we're going to take a look at. It's this comparison of Christian tribulation views. And as you can see in this particular chart, the one that's not on there is the pre-wrath, but as you can see, the pre-trib rapture view and the mid-trip rapture view, and again, the post-trip rapture view. Now, let's see. I guess the best way to do this is to explain what each part means. And I'm going to use a pre-trip because it's up here first to explain the different of what this particular uh, timeline is. This is the beginning of the church age, and this is the church age all the way through. And if you want to know when the beginning of the church age started, when did that start? You can go back to Acts chapter 2. Now, so this is the time in which, using in this study, and I personally believe that we're in right now, this is the church age. And at, at the beginning of the tribulation, seven year tribulation, we're not here to to go through uh, through that on this particular video. Maybe we'll get into it later on. But just counting that as a common thought, seven years tribulation with the last three and a half being the great tribulation, that's kind of a common view of the matter. But when the tribulation starts, the church, as, as you can see here, this is a point in which the church, um, well, listen, I don't want to go that direction. This is the tribulation from this line to this line and then the start of the millennium and then the last judgment, the great white throne judgment. Revelation, I believe it's chapter 20. And the millennial reign is a thousand year reign of Christ. Now, let's look at the pre trib, mid trib, post trib uh, view. This being the start of the tribulation, seven years. The pre trib view teaches that at the beginning of the seven years, right at the beginning of the seven year start of uh, the beginning of the uh, tribulation, the saints will be raptured up as we just read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 17, to meet the Lord in the air. That's the blue arrow is signifying the Lord. This is the church. When both will be caught up together, and so shall we be with the Lord forever. Now, if you go to John chapter, chapter 14, it talks about uh, the mansions and... and, and uh, it gets into a, you know, the Lord's talking about he's going to prepare a place for us, and then he's going to bring him on, bring us on to himself, and and uh, you just go, just go check out John chapter 14. Now, so here we go. That's the pre-trib rapture view. That before the tribulation even starts, the church is raptured, and then the second coming of Christ is with the church, and the pre-trib view says that. The saints will come with the Lord, and you see that as well, what we just read in 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, chapter 4. And uh, you also, you can check out towards the end, well not towards the end of Revelation 19, but in Revelation 19 it talks about the Lord coming back. And uh, alright, so we get a chance to talk about all of that as well. And then the millennium starts. Well, the mid-trip says that know all of that's going to happen in the middle, about the middle of the tribulation, that the church will be raptured up. And I, and we're going to read a little bit on that and meet the Lord in the air, go up to heaven with the Lord, and then at the end of the tribulation, come back with the Lord and then start the millennium. All right. The post-trib view says, no, this the second coming of Christ in the rapture is all in one event. In which at the end of the tribulation, the saints of God will be raptured up when the Lord is coming back for the second coming, meet him in the air, and ultimately come come uh, down to earth and then start the millennium. And, and that's that's it in a nutshell between the three views here. And then the pre-wrath is basically that the church is um, raptured before the wrath of God starts. Now... Let's go back and look at some explanations real quick and see what we can uh, see what we can come up with. All right, the pre-trib. Let's see if I can kind of make the 
the words just a little bit bigger without losing a whole lot. Again, the the biggest debate in all of this is when is when the timing. As you can see up here, the timing that's the, that's where the argument is, and the and each one will use scripture to justify what what they believe. Now, real quickly, the pre-trip position. According to this particular article, the pre-trib position advocates that the rapture will occur before the beginning of the seven-year tribulation period, while the second coming will occur at the end of the seven-year tribulation period. So they're saying there's two different comings. There's the Lord coming just midway in the air to meet the saints, and then there's and then at the end of the tribulation, he's coming back with the with the church. So that's that's basically what you're looking at. And there are those who believe in that. You'll see some names up there. You can pause it and read those who have that particular view. Now, going to the second one here on our list, the mid-trip says mid-trip position espouses that the rapture will occur at some point in the middle of what is popularly called the tribulation period or, Daniel, or during Daniel's 70th week. However, since the Bible uses tribulation to refer to the second half of Daniel's 70th week, from a mid-tribulationist -trib point of view, he is a pre-tribulationist. Uh, you know, they, they would probably argue differently. The tribulation is typically divided into two periods of three and a half years each. And this is going to serve to be kind of uh, to be really important in what we're talking about. Mid tribulation is hold that the saints will go through the first period, beginning of travail, which is not the tribulation, but will be raptured into heaven before the severe outpouring of God's wrath in the second half of what is popularly called the tribulation. Mid -tribu tribulation is appeal to Daniel seven twenty five, which says the saints will be given over to tribulation for time times and a half a time, which is three and a half years, a time being one year, so times being two years, one plus two is three, and then you, add, then you have and a half time, which is a half, so that's three and a half years. At the halfway point to of the tribulation, the Antichrist will commit the abomination of desolation by desecrating the Jerusalem temple, which is yet to be built. So, and um, that's the mid-trip view, as we just saw on the chart earlier. So we got pre-trib, that's before the tribulation, mid-trib, in the middle of the tribulation. Now we're going to look at post-trib, which is uh, the belief that Jesus, that Jesus comes, the second coming, and the rapture happens at the same time. Um, and let's, I'll do the post-trib first, and then I'll come back to the partial. All right, the post-trib position places a rapture at the end of the tribulation period. Post-trib writers define the tribulation period in a generic sense as the entire present age or in a specific sense of a period of time preceding the second coming of Christ. The emphasis in this view is that the church will undergo the tribulation. That's the, that's the part that scares people, okay? Um, and I'm going to tell you why it scares people because, well, here in America, there's not... The, the church is not being persecuted on a phys in a physical sense like in other parts of the world. All right, it's more uh, it's more through media and things of that nature and kind of a society thing. It's more verbal than anything else. Um, it's not physical like in other places. So the emphasis in this view is that the church will undergo the tribulation, even though the church will be spared will be spared the wrath of God. Immediately after tribulation of those days, they shall gather together his elect. Now that's from Matthew 24, verses 29 through 31. And um, we can go back and read that. We're going we're gonna to cover all of those anyway. All right, so it says, it's cited as foundational, as a foundational scripture for this view. Post-tribulation is perceived the rapture as occurring simultaneously with the second coming of Christ, as we discussed before that. The rapture happening, the, the, pre, the post trip say it's happening at the same time. Upon Jesus' return, believers will meet him in the air and, and will then accompany him in his return to the earth. In the epistles of Paul, most notably in 1 Thessalonians 4, chapter 4, verses 16 through 17, and 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 51 and 50 through 52, a trumpet is described as blowing at the end of the tribulation to herald the return of Christ. 
Revel and then they mentioned Revelation 11:15 further supports this view. And and here are some of the people who believe in the post-trib view. Now, as I said before, I will go back to the partial view. The partial rapture theory holds that true Christians will be raptured before, in the midst of, or after the tribulation, depending on one's genuine conversion to the faith. Therefore, the rapture of a believer is determined by the timing of his conversion during the tribulation. The proponents of this theory hold that only those who are faithful in the church will be raptured or translated, and the rest will either be raptured sometime during the tribulation or at its end. All right, and it talks about, um, well, I'll go ahead and read this. As stated by Ira David, a proponent of this view, the saints will be raptured in groups during the tribulation as they are prepared to go. So there you have it. Those are the, the major views on this, and, and there probably are some other views tied into it. But pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, pre-wrath, and partial. And this particular channel is set up to investigate this issue. We're going to look at a whole lot of a whole lot of things, and uh, you can make up your mind which way you want to go. And uh, ultimately, the scripture must be absolutely must be the final authority. Um, I know we're going to look at a, a bunch of different things: the wedding, the, the ancient Jewish um, wedding models, and all of those different things, historical information books that people wrote and all of that will be touched will be touched and brought up but ultimately the word of god must be the final authority feel free to leave any comments add any information i ask that you please respect each other don't you know leave a lot of the sar leave the sarcasm and stuff out you know let's 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 be reasonable about this okay all right thanks for listening